If you want to get into recording and mixing in Pro Tools, but you're just not sure how to work the DAW in terms of routing different tracks, buses, and auxes, then this video is for you. I'm going to be explaining the most basic routing techniques so you can improve your workflow and make more room for creativity in your mixes. So I want to break this video up into a couple separate parts. First, I want to explain how to actually route signal within Pro Tools, just so you can get a basic idea of recording. So that'll be pretty quick. And then I want to explain both buses and auxes, just so you can get a basic idea of those as well. And then at the very end of the video, I'll show you how I actually implement using buses and auxes in my mixes and just the practicality of that, I guess. So anyways, let's just get right into it. So I have an empty Pro Tools session here, and I'm just going to show you how I would route signal while recording. So I'm just going to create a new track here. And a quick key to create a new track is Shift Command N on Mac, at least. I'm not sure what it is on Windows, but I'm just going to create one mono audio track. And let's just name this vocal. So I created that track here and right now we can't really see our inputs and outputs on the track. I could see that if I brought it up right here, but usually I kind of like going to the mix window just because I think it's a little bit easier. How you can toggle between these two windows is by holding command and then equals. You can just toggle between those windows. But anyways, yeah, I like being in the mix window when I'm setting up my inputs and outputs. So I'm going to change these to no input so you guys can actually see how I would route it if there was no inputs and outputs. So basically the inputs are on the top and the outputs are on the bottom right here. So the input is what's coming into the track and then the output is where I'm sending that signal after. As you can see right here, I have input one because I'm sending signal in through my mic and my mic is connected to input one. And then for the output, as of right now, I don't have like a bus or anything I'm sending this signal to. So I'm just going to put it on external headphones so I can just hear my microphone because external headphones is this device right here. It's connected to my interface. So I'm literally just receiving the signal on the input one and then sending it out to my headphones. That's literally the simplest way I can explain inputs and outputs. But if I want to hear this signal, all you have to do is click this little I button or you can do shift I, I and, and now, now you see, see that, that we are getting, getting signal, signal right here. here. Um, and, and you're, you're probably, probably hearing, hearing my voice, voice twice. twice. So I'm going to turn that off because it's a little hard when there's a delay in my voice. But if you want to record, all you have to do is arm the track um, by clicking this red record button right here. And, and you're, you're going to be able, able to, to hear yourself, yourself as, well. as well. Or you can do shift R, R to, to turn, turn that on as well. well. So I can do shift R, R and then, and then command, command space, space to, to actually, actually start recording. recording. So, so now, now the track, track is recording. recording. As, As you, can you can see right, right there, the signal's popping, popping up. And then, then just space, space to stop. stop. I'm, I'm going to turn this off because it's really, really distracting. And we just recorded our first take in Pro Tools. So now the track is recording. As you can see right there, the signal's popping up. So as you can see, routing signal to record is actually a lot easier than it seems. And you can record as many takes as you would like on this. And one last quick tip before we get into explaining buses and auxes is if you do control backslash um you can create a new playlist and basically what this is going to do is it's going to create a new playlist on the same track so you can do one take and let's say you kind of like that take but you still want to get another one you can create a new playlist and then do the exact same take on the same track you don't have to create a whole new track to record another take and if you click this little waveform thing right here you can actually go to the playlist and you see that first take right there. So this is just a cool way when recording to kind of organize your takes. So now that you have your signal properly routed and recorded, it's time to talk about buses and auxes. So what we're going to do is shift command N to create new tracks. I'm going to create two stereo aux tracks and this first one I'm going to name bus and the second one I'm going to name aux. Now, the main difference between an aux track and just a normal audio track is that you never record to an aux track. As you can see on the left hand side here, where the record and input monitoring buttons are on the audio track, we don't see those on either of the aux tracks. So we're never going to be recording to an aux track. Instead, it's always sending something to an aux track. And to go a little deeper on that, I want to actually explain what a bus is and what an aux is. So a bus is something that can be used to control multiple signals at once. So let's say I had like four layers of a vocal. I could send all four of those layers to that bus and then that fader on that bus will allow me to control the level of all four of those vocals and the inserts on the bus or the plugins on the bus would affect each one of those vocals as well. So it's kind of like a track you can use to group other tracks together, if that makes sense. An aux on the other hand, or an aux send is basically like an extra output. You're basically splitting and making a copy of the original signal and you're sending that copy to a different track. So it's kind of like two versions of the same signal and one of them is being sent to the aux track. So I guess the main difference between like a bus 
and an aux send that I'm trying to explain here is with a bus, you're affecting the entire signal and with an aux send, you're only affecting a variable or part of the signal. It's gonna make a lot more sense once I actually show you how to do it. So, so let's get into the routing of buses and aux sends. So I have a new session up here. It's just some vocals that I recorded for a song. Talk to me now, say so. As you can see, we have multiple layers of different things right here. And let's say I wanted to take these layers right here and put the exact same effects on all of them. What I used to do is I would literally put the inserts or plugins on each track and it would just take up a lot of time and also burn a lot of CPU power. So what we can do is use a bus for that. So I'm gonna create a new stereo aux track and we're gonna name this let's just name it vocal mix i guess i don't know so as you can see right here we have the vocal mix bus we're gonna take the output of each of these tracks and how you can send multiple tracks at once to one output is make sure you have the tracks highlighted and then hold shift option click the output go down to bus and then bus one and two so now we have these three audio tracks right here with the vocals on them routed to bus one and two so that means we have to go over to our bus right here, go to the input section, because remember input is what the track is receiving. Go to bus and bus one and two. Uh. And now as you can see, I grouped those three tracks on this single bus right here, and I can use this fader to control those three. Talk to me now. Say That's something you can do. You can also, like I said before, put inserts or plugins. Let's say I wanted an EQ on here, I can add that, and this EQ is going to affect all of those vocals. Talk to me now, say something, talk to me now. Instead of having to put all those plugins on each of these tracks, we can just do it all here. So that's one of the most common uses of a bus that I use in my mixes. Now moving on to the aux end. A really common use for an aux end that I personally use is for putting reverb on a vocal. So again, what I'm gonna do, shift command N to create a new track, and then we're gonna make it an aux, and let's just name this aux reverb. So let's say we wanna send uh, just this vocal right here. Talk to me now. To the reverb. What I'm gonna do on this reverb track right here is I'm gonna set the input to a different bus. Now I'm gonna rename this bus uh, reverbs just so we don't get mixed up with buses and aux sends. I'm still using a bus, but this one's different because we are gonna be using these sends right here. So as you can see, I used bus three and four and I renamed it reverb. So now on the send of the lead vocal track, which is this one right here, um, we're gonna click that, go to bus. And then as you can see right there, we renamed that one reverb. And then this little fader window pops up. And this window is really going to help you understand what the difference is between a bus and a send. This, like I was saying before, is basically like the amount of signal that you're sending to that aux track. So the more we turn this up, the more reverb we're going to hear basically on that vocal. But you have to make sure that you actually put the reverb on the aux track. I forgot to do that. So we're going to go on the reverb track right here. Go to inserts, click any reverb you like. Now that we have the reverb on the track, we can click on the send right here and it's gonna bring up that fader. Another cool trick I learned is you can hold command and click this little arrow and it'll just bring it up in the channel strip so you don't have to like open the send every time. You can just use this fader right here. But as you can hear, the more we turn this up, the more reverb we're gonna hear. Talk to me now, say something, talk to me now. Say something when I don't listen. I need you to tell me to stop. And that about wraps it up. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, I would really appreciate a like and possibly a sub. But yeah, definitely more videos like this in the future. And I'll see you in the next one.